Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. Now, today's show is going to be on comic strips, and everybody loves comic strips because it pokes fun at us and just reminds us not to take ourselves too seriously. Now, for our feature of the day, we're going to have a nationally syndicated comic strip artist, Jimmy Johnson, will be joining us. So stay tuned for him. I know you'll enjoy it. And for our doodle trick portion, cartoons to do with the number two. Stay tuned for that, too. So let's get started, and we're going to do a cousin to the comic strip, the gag panel. It's a different form of a comic strip, and I'll read it to you right here. Hey, I hope Billy is enjoying that new cartooning program. Yeah, his parents are walking in, and he's enjoying the program, all right? He's drawing all over the walls. Well, that's the gag. Now, a gag panel is a little bit different than a comic strip in that you only have that one block to tell your whole story and deliver the punchline. Whereas a comic strip, you've got all these different panels, like one, two, three, maybe four, and then boom, deliver the joke. Well, you can't do that with a gag panel. So, what I've done here is I've made a rough, and a rough is just that. It's a squiggly pencil line drawing that just helps me stage the gag. And staging means how best to tell the story. So I'm going to tape this down, because that's what it is, a frame of reference, just something to glance at while I do my finished drawing. So that goes right up there. Now, I have something else to show you. This was another approach I thought I might take, but I ended up not using it. Just to show you that there's a couple different ways to approach the same cartooning assignment. I have his father reading a newspaper, and he's thinking in a thought balloon. I hope he's enjoying that program. And behind him, little Billy is drawing all over the walls. And that would have worked, but I decided not to go that route. All right. The next stage is the finished pencil drawing, and I've already done that for you right here. Now, this is the finished, inked in, uh, finished pencil in version of the rough. And I'm going to put this down and ink it in. Right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to get my pen, and I'm going to... But first, it's time for the gag sketch of the day. And today, it is a pun. Now, I know you have this in your computer. Take a look at this. It's a hard drive. That's right. A hard drive. This guy's having a hard time of it, too. <laughs> there you have it. All right. Now, I'm going to pick up my pen here, and I'm going to ink in this gag panel. Now, first, I'd like to show you this pen. It's a medium tip, felt tip, black marker with a little bit of hand pressure. I can get a nice thick and thin line. And that's the sort of thing you want to get with your cartoon line because it adds a little interest instead of just a steady line that never really goes anywhere, never gets any thicker or thinner. Okay. Now I'm going to ink in this drawing. And I'll start with, I'll start with the lettering. Now, it's important to have lines for these lettering for these letters up here. See this? Because if you don't, your letters and your sentences will start to wave up and down, and you don't want to do that. And I've seen many cartoon strips, I don't know, I, I think they're hampered by bad, bad lettering. I think that it's a good idea to spend a little time and make sure that the lettering is very legible. Okay, now I'll do a little bit of the second line here. At first, I penciled it in. Now, I'm going over that, obviously. And that's very important. Because that way you know if it's going to work out at the end of the line. Uh, that old gag sketch, plan ahead, and then you see at the end of the sentence, the H-E-A-D part is all crammed in. That's why the penciling stage is there. You make all your mistakes there and erase and make sure it's right. All right, now, I'm not going to finish the whole balloon. I'm going to ink this part in. And the pointer here tells you who is doing the talking. And in this case, it's the fellow walking in the room. Come around, and there you have it. All right, now I'm going to ink in his father here. All right, now, when I penciled him in, what I've done is I drew the whole character. Even though there's a wall blocking part of him, I just drew the whole character, and that way I knew it was going to be in the right proportion. But actually, you don't see all of him. This line here comes down from the wall. But at least by doing it that way, I knew it was going to be correct. All right, now his hand comes out here. And I'm working about seven by seven. Now, as I said, this is a square. 
And there's a cartooning hero of mine, Bill Keen. And he does a gag panel called The Family Circus. And he's definitely a cartooning hero of mine. And even though it's a gag panel, it does something very unique. He draws the gag panel in a circle. And he's the only one that does that. Because of The Family Circus, he made it a circle. Pretty clever. How about you? Do you have any cartooning heroes? People whose style you admire? And that's where style comes from. I think we just gravitate, without even knowing it, towards somebody's style that we already kind of like. And you don't have to worry about being a copy. Because even without trying, your own style emerges all by itself. If you keep at it. Sometimes I try to draw something twice within my own style and it doesn't come out the same. So if you are copying someone else's, you know it's going to end up a little different. All right, now I'm drawing her in. And that's all I'm going to do there. Now, for the borders, you can use a ruler or you can do it freehand. It depends on what? Your style of cartooning. That's right. And sometimes it's hand-drawn way of doing it without the ruler gives you a cartoonified look to it. And after you do this, the next thing you would need is to erase the pencil lines and pencil lines go and the ink lines stay, just like this. And I'm using a kneaded rubber eraser here, and I can show you that to you, show that right here. And you can knead it like a piece of dough or clay, and that means that it kind of cleans itself as you do that, plus you can shape it into a point just like that to get into a hard to reach spot of your drawing and that's handy because sometimes you just want to get into that one spot without erasing too much all right now here's the finished drawing again and do you see this area right here that's all gray toned well a newspaper or black and white printing doesn't see half tones and everything they only see it in blacks and whites so to get this to look like a gray area it's done with dots like a pattern screen and I'll show you how I did that. That looks like this, with all these dots on it. It comes in different patterns. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this on this one I have right here, the line drawing. All linked in. This is the finished version of the pencil drawing after I've inked it in. Now, what I do is I lay this on top of the area that I want to put the screen on. And if you need help, have someone help you because this is a sharp knife, and this is a, a cutting knife, and what you have to do is cut away the excess. Now, I'll show you what I mean. Now, right over this easy chair, or the sofa right here, I'm going to cut a piece right out of this pattern screen. And then I'm going to peel it up, just like this. Now, watch. You don't cut all the way through. You just cut enough to be able to grab the piece off. See, and it's got a sticky back, and it comes right off. All right, then I'm going to place this on top of the area that I want to cover and cut away the excess. Now watch. Cut along the black line, and don't cut too deep, because you'll cut into your original drawing, and that's not what you want to do. Come up, go around his foot, because I don't want it to be over his foot, and come out. Now I'll just peel off that first piece, and then it comes right off, see? It's got a sticky back and the rest of it sticks. And you just lift underneath it and peels right off. And what do you do with the piece that you peeled off? I'll tell you what you do. You save it because it's reusable and there's no reason to waste. You put it right back on that big piece. All right, now take this last piece off right down this black line and peel this off as well. And there it is. And I'll show you the original again. And as you can see, so I have someone on the sofa, someone on his jeans, and I even put a little bit around the television. And look what doing that does to the picture. I mean, it, it kind of breaks things up and adds a little bit of depth. Well, that's all the time we have right now. And you can visit me on my website at bruceblitz.com and get more information on comic strips and cartooning tips and projects and all sorts of neat things. Now stay tuned for the feature of the day with our special guest.
Well, I'd like to introduce you to my special guest today, Mr. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, thanks for coming to the show. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Bruce. Well, let me tell you a little bit about my guest. He's a great cartoonist that has been making people laugh for many, many years in over 800 newspapers every day with his warm and slightly offbeat comic strip, Arlo and Janice. Now, Arlo and Janice are a husband and wife who are raising their son, Gene. That's the premise. The strip is really funny with a remarkable insight into family life, and that's why it's so popular, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, my guest has also won numerous awards for his drawings and for journalism, and he's worked as an editorial cartoonist for the Jackson, Mississippi Daily News, and just an all-around great fellow cartooner, and I'm really glad he joined us today. Now, let's talk a little bit about cartooning. Now, right. i got a question to ask you. People always ask me, where did I learn to draw? Why did I learn to draw? And I'll ask that to you. When did you decide to become a cartoonist? I don't know that I ever really decided. I've never met a small child that didn't like to draw, and I was no exception. Uh, that's very I just true. never lost the interest. Uh -huh. Most most people do along the way somewhere. Did you read comic books or the oh, funny yes. papers? And a lot of comic books. Uh, uh -huh. I, I had a big box under my bed that was just it. That all, they were all dog-eared, and the box was falling apart. And I'd uh -huh. reach under every night and and grab one and to read before I went to sleep. Now, did you used to copy out of the books and try yes, to like I mimic did. what you saw? Yes. Yeah. And then I was became aware of the copyright laws and realized I couldn't get away with that forever. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> but well, I learned course. a lot by copying directly from. Yeah, that's a good point. Books. I find the same thing, and I, I don't think it's really copying. It's just really learning. Well, there's nothing wrong with children doing it. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. You're not wrong. trying to sell it. You're trying to learn. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, how about how about the writing end of it? Now, uh, did that come easy to you, or was that difficult? Uh, I wouldn't say it, it comes easily. I uh, my try. I'm a journalist. I was a reporter for several years before I became a full time cartoonist. Oh, I didn't know that. And, that's great. Uh, and I was always. Uh, a, I'm an editor by trade, and I, I was see. always aware of, of the spoke of the written word. And, uh, so and did that make it, it easier to come up with gags and jokes and storylines? Uh, it made it easier to spell. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Cartoonists are notoriously bad spellers. I think that may be how I sold the strip. My, they were, there were no misspelled words in my submissions. In Arlo and Janice. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let's draw Arlo and Janice. Now, let's start with Arlo. Would you draw the main character this there? This is Arlo. Okay. He's just a guy. Uh-huh. That's his forehead. For some reason, I always start with a forehead. You have to start somewhere. That's you have to start somewhere. Start. Huh? That's fine. He has a big <laughs> old bulbous cartoon nose, and a his jaw goes down like that. He gives him a devil may care attitude here. Uh huh. Such you a can, clean style. You can accomplish so this. much with just the eye. Now, I've, I've learned that. Just however you draw the, the eye. Expression the expression is in the eye. Expression yeah. is so critical. But I was just and saying, it's so clean of a style. Look how you're just doing that that line. <clears throat> it's just. It's just. Hits home. I used to see cartoonists when I was a child draw like this on TV or something, and I wondered how they did it. How did they do that? Gosh, that's so amazing. Me, me I didn't I, realize I, that they, they can do it because they've done it about 15,000 uh, times before. But, but that, I know what you mean. That no, line no. always looks so, uh, so confident. Yeah. Okay, and now that's, that, that's Arlo. That's Arlo today. That's Arlo. Okay, now, uh, did the characters evolve? At all over the years, I mean, uh, it's been oh, many years yes. since been, it did. Oh yes, they didn't uh, always look it, this way. Some of it consciously, most of it unconsciously, as my drawing style developed. I actually have learned to draw cartoons by drawing this comic strip. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you I, figure, I learned a lot. Uh -huh. well, how, well, you need what 365 a year, and that's a lot of drawing, isn't it? Uh, yes, 366 <laughs> on leap years. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's uh, that's too much work. I would stop at 365. I wouldn't go any further. Now, would you show us when you draw uh, Janice a little bit about how the uh, style did evolve? Certainly. Okay. A couple pieces off here. Okay. Now, this is Janice today. Again, I start with the forehead usually, and she usually has an eye about right there. And mm -hmm. the nose. She's got a cute little button nose, and. She's got a little fatter face, a little rounder face than Arlo. Mm -hmm. Can't say, mustn't say fat face. She wouldn't like that. Well, that would be some uh, material for the strip right there. And Use this, that word. <laughs> yes, yeah, sounds like something out of Arlo and James. Uh, she has a short hairdo these days, a shoulder length bob. And that's what she looks like uh, right now. And this is, well, at less than a shoulder length, I should say. It's something like this. And, uh, but she started out much, much, much different. Mm -hmm. The character 
they they don't quite look like other characters, and that that's very important in, uh, no. for your strip. Wouldn't you say you'd have to have something a drawing yes, style that's a little bit unique? Important that they'd be able to tell it from Blondie, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, but th that's a good point. Now you have uh, family strips. You have lots of family strips out there, oh, and yeah. that's it's, that it's must a crowded be, yeah. field. And yeah. the re one reason there are so many is I, I would I would rather be drawing something else, frankly. But when I, I sold the strip in the mid '80s, families and Baby boomers having children were a very hot issue. They were very topical, and that's what oh, that's see. what the syndicates wanted to buy. They'd give us a strip about families. Give see, us a strip see, I find about that families. I find that uh, surprising because they would think that. Uh, well, as a cartoonist, I would think that well, I have to come up with something new. I, I, they already have family oh, strips, yeah. well, but that's what cartoonists do. Car that's a mistake, actually. It's mm -hmm. not. It, it's it's it may not be a mistake artistically, but it's a mistake. Uh, practically speaking, if you if, that young cartoonists make trying to sell a strip, they'll they'll say, well, what is nobody doing? Nobody's doing a comic strip about an insect culture on Mars or something like that. And so they think that's what they're I'll do. Not, I'll, 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 I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they get that a stuff big never sell. <laughs> <laughs> the, do what everybody else is doing. It's, it's kind of painful well, to yeah. say, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's true. But if you bring some uh, interesting gags, something new and bright to the gags, I, I can see where that would work. And that's what you're doing with Arlo and Janice. Now Janice, when I started out looked more like this. She had long, oh, flowing yeah. hair. Now her facial outline kind and of stayed yes. the same. A little bit different, maybe. Uh, it's, it's evolved quite a bit, actually. Uh, her nose is a little bit uh, different in the old days. And Very cute. Now you colored this in. Now when you draw cartoon hair, as you did with what she looks like right now, you don't draw, you don't color in the whole thing, you don't blacken it all in, or you leave some white space and uh, the hair like mm -hmm. this, I, it's pretty much as I'm drawing it here. Okay, you leave the top part I'll, white. Highlight on top, uh, yes. Okay. That way I don't have to ink that. And it looks like a shine, uh, you know, like a highlight or a shine. It's right, a little interesting. Right. It's not just, or it does. Uh, it, it's not just a black blob then. It becomes uh, a little more interesting. <laughs> now, I, don't, I notice that you, you don't say, see the mouth. Uh, no. They're not saying anything. They're not saying anything <laughs> this time. Okay, well. Okay, yeah. If okay, you were a drawer. Here's, here's the mouth. <laughs> Draw the mouth. Okay. Now All she's right. Smiling, now she's smiling. Kind of All right. Actually, she's saying something. Okay. That, that's kind of how she looks when she's in a good mood. She's got something to say. Okay. Is she always in a good, she in a good mood a lot in the strip? Or, yes. Uh, it's, it's, it it's, a, it's a warm strip. It's kind of a sardonic strip, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it has a warm undertone. Very good point. It reminds me. I, I, when I read that strip, sometimes I say to myself, it's like Jimmy's spying on my household or something. It's like some of those gags, they just really hit home. I, do, I, do you ever hear that? Uh, I do, uh, and when somebody accuses me of being a peeping Tom, I take it, <laughs> I take it as a compliment because I know that I'm... You're hitting home somewhere. Literally yeah. hitting home. Yes. That's great. Well, hitting do people respond home. to you? I mean, do they get letters and things? I get a lot of email these days. Oh, okay. Uh, I used yeah, to yeah, get snail right. mail in the old days, but now email is a wonderful way to, uh, to keep in touch with with my readers. I, I get a lot more response now since the advent yeah, of email. Yeah, sure. It's easier for people to do that. Of course, every now and then somebody will write in and say, your stuff stinks. I don't understand. Well, I'm sure that happens. You, you can't to please everybody. everybody. But you know what? Even but that, look, you're still getting uh, response. Uh, what's the old expression? Uh, any publicity is good publicity sometimes. I don't know. This is Ludwig. Ah, this Ludwig, the cat. the cat. Yes. And he is named after a cat that my family actually had when I was a a, uh, a young boy. Ludwig was a little Dutch boy that my father encountered in World War II as an infantry uh, uh, private, and his, his outfit kind of took this boy under, under their wing in, uh, in Holland, and he used to call me Ludwig when I was a little oh, boy, okay. just as a, as a nickname. And, uh, I was thinking and that's something to do with Beethoven, but no, I guess not. Huh? Well, I think a lot of people are lo named Ludwig over there. <laughs> what a great character. Look at that design. I, I think that is funny. He's no. just... He doesn't talk. And he, doesn't, he doesn't talk. He's just... And there's no thought A regular balloons. old cat. And, I get, and, and people, people <laughs> respond well to Ludwig the cat. I need some whiskers. Oh, that, I always forget the whiskers. That is a great looking character. That really is. He's, okay, now, could something. you draw Gene for us now? Gene is the son in the strip. Sure. And, uh, I'll take a few pages off there. Gene is a, a teenager these days. He's about... He's 14. Mm -hmm. And he, his face... In the face, he uh, looks... Uh, really just like his mother. He resembles, he takes after his mother's side of the family, okay. as we say down south. And uh, I, I couldn't tell you were from south. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not go there. <laughs> and, uh, so he takes after his mother's side? Yes. 
Yes, it does. He actually looks uh, very much, he's designed very much like Janice. Uh, that's so. kind of a mistake there. It really goes kind of like that. <laughs> and he's, his hair is, is sandy colored like his father's. And that way I don't have to ink it in. But like most children, he's a combination of his mother and father. Oh, that is so great. I, I just think that is great. Uh, I like the... Uh, and when you make a mistake like this, you just... You just oh, that's just a good thing about cartoon. Oh, yeah, 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 make a little black for the outline. That's what... <laughs> How far right in advance, Jimmy, do you work on the gags for the syndicate? Uh, I'm a notorious uh, deadline violator, as my editor would tell you. I, really? Uh, I, I stay right on deadline. I should work about five to six weeks ahead. I work three to four weeks ahead. Three to four weeks. But I consistently work three to four weeks ahead, so they... So they accept it. So they accept <laughs> yes. that that's being okay. They know they'll get it eventually. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. I, have well, some great, I work with some great people at uh, United Media in New York. Amy, Amy Lago is my editor. She's um, uh -huh. a good friend and, and has been a big help to me. Now, they sell this comic strip, and for our friends at home, uh, how it works is... Uh, they don't sell it enough. Uh, they don't sell it enough? Well, <laughs> maybe after this they will. Who knows? Well, how it works is a comic strip artist will uh, uh, make a deal with a, a, a newspaper, syndi a comic syndicate. Called a syndicate, a syndicate, yes. a syndicate are, are the salespeople that go out and sell the comic strip to newspapers because cartoonists really couldn't do that. Even if they had the time, it would be tough to see a busy editor in the first place. Is that correct? Right. It, it's, it's, there are a few people who have, who have experienced some kind of success. Self-syndication. Self-syndicating yeah. themselves, but it, it's very hard work, and it's and it's it's very difficult row to hoe, as we say down south. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to draw you a full-bodied Arlo here. Oh, okay. Look at that. Man. And I think we'll give it a try. One of my favorite strips uh, recently, I saw uh, he had a pumpkin, and. He was about to carve the pumpkin, and he put it on the table, and he had Janice move over to a little bit. She goes, she didn't know what she was moving over for, and he had the pumpkin right in front of her. He goes, there, don't move. And the strip ended with him about to start carving the pumpkin, and she realized that she was going to be the model for this Giving pumpkin. The yeah, that's right, that's right. I thought that was very funny. Well, see, that's the kind of thing Arlo would do to Janice, and she would... She would take in stride, but he, he didn't mean it ugly. He was just being right, funny. Right, right. Oh, that's great. Well, I'll tell you, you got a great drawing style, Jimmy, and I want to thank you so much for coming today. We're out of time right now. Already? I'm a big fan of Arlo and Janice, and I want to wish you a continued success with the strip. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed every minute of it. You're probably inspiring cartoonists right now on television and in your strip every single day. I hope not. I don't need the competition. Kids, do not try this at home. He's a professional, folks. <laughs> Well, for more information on Arlo and Janice and Jimmy Johnson, visit me on my website at bruceblitz.com for drawing tips, cartooning tips, crafts, projects, all sorts of neat things. Now stay tuned for Cartoon Doodle Tricks. Welcome to today's Doodle Tricks. And some friends stop by because they love when I draw Doodle Tricks, and I'd like to welcome them now. Hi, guys. Hi. All right, today, cartoons to do with the number two. And I'll write the number two right here. Now, if you're not joining in yet, grab a pencil. It's very easy. Now, watch. Make a line right over here. And a little line like that for a nostril. And right here, we're going to make a smile line because this is going to be a beak for a cartoon bird. See? Easy. Over here I'll make some wings and some wings out this way and some feet and maybe he's flying, some tail feathers with some motion lines, cartoon effects and accessories and there you have it, a cartoon bird from the number two. Like that? Yes. Right, let's do another one. Now sometimes people write the number two this way. And I do this sometimes. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do right here, make a triangle shape. And right from that point, make a smile line coming out this way. And one coming out this way. And some dots for whiskers. And this line here will be a whisker. And make a couple more. And let's have a tongue coming out because we're going to make a cat. Two eyes like that and eyebrows going up. And some ears. And we'll close that line up. And let's add a little color. Make it like a tiger cat. Use some 
orange color sticks. And there you have it. Maybe a little red for a tongue. So from number two, we have a cute little cat. Like that, guys? Yes! Well, that's all the time we have for today, and I hope you've enjoyed it at home. And, of course, my friend's right here in the studio. Now, for our tip of the day, practicing counts, you can count on that. If you want to get good at music, sports, or art, practice is the key. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me today, and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning! Keep on cartooning.